Happy Valentine's Day from Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review The Loved Ones. Prom Night can be torture. Directed by Sean Byrne, starring Xavier Samuel and Robin McLevy, The Loved Ones is about Brent, who turns down Lola's invitation to go to prom with her. Unfortunately, Lola's not really satisfied with the, uh, with the outcome of that invitation, and she decides to kidnap and torture Brent. So what do we like? I'm kicking it off with the dynamic duo of Robin McLevy and John Brumpton. The two of them, as their psychotic characters, was insane. And it wasn't just how they acted, it was mainly how they were shot. Because there were so many times that the camera's doing long takes and reading their facial expressions where they're not saying anything and it's just slowly zooming in. And it's just that much creepier because you're seeing how crazy they really are. Yes, I completely agree. The pair of them were just nuts. And you can tell that this is not like the first time they've done this kind of thing. Like dad is just trying to make his little girl proud, you know? The acting in general, I think Brent did a great job as well. I mean, for the most part, he's fucking tied up and struggling, but everybody did a great job, whether it was using their body language for Brent's sake and everybody else, I mean, it was well done. I like the whole concept of this film because it wasn't like your stereotypical rape revenge movie that we might see a girl torturing guys for. It was just like a crazy bitch. Like she's just loopy, like searching for her prince. And what's good about Brent's character is you're sympathetic for him before he even gets captured because of his past where the film starts off with a nice twist of him losing his father. It just ties itself together and the whole time you're really rooting for Brent and you want him to escape and stop Lola. And it's nice because you establish it from the start and it's right to the very end where you're like, come on Brent, get out of this alive. I really enjoyed the cinematography in this film. I felt the long takes really added to the characters, especially because it created that psychological tension between like each member sitting down at the table and showing how crazy they were. But I just, liked overall how it was shot because we got a lot of tight shots in there. For a torture film, it really had you on like the edge of your seat. They used clever tricks and angles to make you not see most of the torture, but hear it. So when you don't actually see it happening, sometimes you're like cringing, like, oh, that's gotta hurt. But when they do show the torture, it is bloody. And that is fantastic because it is a torture porn style film. However, it doesn't go into like, extremely graphic detail like a lot of other movies do, it has its fair share of blood and it looks realistic. Now what didn't we like? I thought we were gonna get a lot more torture in this film because the way it was advertised and the way the trailer made it seem is Brent was gonna like really get tortured. What happened to him was bad. I was just expecting more out of it. I think the problem lies in that it was a sole, like, one character. So to have a torture porn movie with only one person getting tortured, it can't really go to the extreme that a lot of people might expect. However, I did like it for that same reason. One of the issues that I had with this movie is something that's typical of a lot of horror movies is they did a lot of things for convenience sake to kind of move the story along. If people were to come and find this house that's in the middle of nowhere, I, I really don't think that the pieces would have fallen in place as easily as they did for anyone to know what is happening in this house. I agree with you on that. There's a lot of silly situations that you're just sitting there like, really, did that just happen? And it was to play to the convenience to further the story. Another thing with the story that I didn't like was the backstory. Most of the film was actually focused on two other characters that we don't really get established, which is Brent's best friend and one of the former victims of Lola, the Valentine family, their daughter, who's rebelling because her father, the cop, can't find her brother. It's annoying because they're playing into this like side story, but they're not giving us enough to care about it, and they're showing too much of it that I don't want to see it because there's way more important things going on. We need to get back to Brent. Again, that plays out the convenience because they're trying to tie in this like twist of fate, but really I didn't care about the story or the side characters. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I was a really big fan of The Loved Ones. I thought it was a cool concept and a unique take as far as Lola's character was concerned because you don't often see a woman that's completely batshit crazy torturing someone who 
you're trying to root for. The acting was phenomenal. I thought Lola and her father were completely crazy. They sold their characters perfectly. And I thought the cinematography really played them up a little bit as well. Especially considering that most of the time that we're with Brent and Lola, it's a one location situation and they kind of have to use that to their advantage and I think they did that to the best of their ability. However, there are some story issues because things were there for convenience and you know that brings it down a bit but I still like the movie and I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna give this four party favors out of five. I enjoyed The Loved Ones. I thought the cinematography really enhanced this film because we got a better understanding of Lola and Daddy as psychotic characters. And Brent was the guy you were rooting for and I liked that aspect of the story. The only thing I didn't like about the story was we had a lot of side story that didn't really need to be there or wasn't really well developed. The torture scenes were well executed and we got to see some unique takes on it with hammers, drills, and knives. So that being said, I'm gonna give this film three and a half not so cool dudes failing to slide across the car hood out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film as well as your favorite film to watch on Valentine's Day. Oh, and make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and beyond.